What's up, girlfriends? You guys did so far. Oh my gosh. You guys did awesome this week. Oh, and I just realized I forgot to send a text message. I'm sorry. Um, I'm going live right now. <laughs> um, Susan. Holy crap. That's so awesome. Down four pounds and about a half an inch to an inch on all measurements. Bam. Oh my goodness. And Carrie, you, let's see. I'm trying to find it. Down four pounds and four inches. Is that what you mean? Oh my goodness. And Belinda, one pound plus what? One and a half inches, two and a half inches being in your what? Fifth week. That is awesome. So proud of you. You guys are doing so good. And let's see, Susan. No, Karen, you lost almost two pounds. You guys are doing so awesome. And Karen and Carrie, thank you for going live. I know it's scary. At first, it's so scary, huh? Now, like when I first went live in my very first group, I was terrified. And really for the first whole challenge, I was terrified. But um, now that this is my ninth challenge that I've done, like it's not such a big deal anymore. Um, I might, I would get nervous if I went live on YouTube, which I can't because you have to have a thousand subscribers and I don't. Um, almost, but I don't. And when I go live on Instagram, sometimes it makes me a little nervous, but cause you never know who's going to watch, you know, but in the group, it's like, I know who's here, you know, like you guys, my hair is so fuzzy. This is what happens on the day that I wash my hair. I end up with like this halo from the hair that's growing back from my babies. You know, I've shown you this, haven't I? Like this, hi Belinda. Like this is the hair coming back from Eva. And so like, I have this all over, right? So like, look at this. I have like Okay, sorry, slightly distracted. Okay, so I thought today I would talk about um, how to track your macros and all that good stuff. So if you have other questions, please put them in the comments because nobody really actually posted a question in my Q&A. Did I put, do a Q&A post? Maybe I forgot to do a Q&A post, which would explain why there's no questions. <laughs> But I'm going to talk about how to track your macros because I know Rebecca wanted to know and somebody else wanted to know. Um, and, you know, so it's the whole, um, it's basically it's like flexible dieting is what it's called, okay, or tracking your macro. Oh my gosh, you guys, tracking your macros. So when you track macros instead of just calories, it kind of is a more... Well, it kind of makes sure you get what you need in order to lose weight, right? Because there's different macro ratios that you can set up based on your goals. If your goal is like strictly to regain your health, hi Karen, if your goal is strictly to regain your health, you would do different macros than you would do if your goal was to lose body fat, okay? If your um, goal was to gain muscle mass, your macros would be different than if your goal was to gain health or gain or lose body fat. Do you see? So by knowing what your goal is, it can help you set up the proper macro ratios based on your goals. And the thing that I love about doing flexible dieting, which I've not always done flexible dieting. This is like my first time doing it and probably not my first time, but like in a while it's been my first time because before I was just doing, I mean, I do track my macro anyway. All my meal plans track macros, but like I would just follow my meal plan. I wouldn't do it like flexible dieting. The difference with between flexible dieting and a meal plan, okay? A meal plan, you're told what to eat and what you're told to eat fits within the macro ratios, right? If you do flexible dieting, okay, it puts the food choice in your court. You decide what to eat based on the macros you need to fill. So it's like, you know, this one, the puzzle's made for you. You get the completed puzzle in a meal plan, right? In flexible dieting, you get the puzzle pieces, but you have to put it together to make the finished puzzle. Does that make sense? So um, because I love doing meal plans and figuring all that out, that's why I create meal plans because I'm really good at it and I really enjoy doing it. So, and I know a lot of people don't like doing that. So that's why I create meal plans so that people don't have to do all the figuring out, right? But I really enjoy the flexible dieting because like last night, did you guys see what I ate yesterday on Insta stories? So it was our um, date night and I did like, I did my normal kind of stuff. My, my tofurkey with my cucumber and my avocado. And I did, um, oh, my protein powder, my oatmeal. And then, um, but at dinner time, because I wanted to make room for Halo Top, the salted sea, sea salt caramel one. Love it. I wanted to make room for that in my meal plan and stick to my macros and still see results, which I did. 
yay. But, um, but I needed some more fat. So it's like you end up with this like Tetris meal at the end of the day, right? Where you're just trying to eat things just to fit macros. So I needed to get more fat. So I added peanut butter, which I love. I have no problem against adding peanut butter. But then I needed the plain carbs. So that was the popcorn, right? So I took the popcorn and I melted the peanut butter. I drizzled it over the popcorn and sprinkled it with some salt and some Lakanto sweetener and stirred it around and ate that. Oh my gosh, I was in heaven while watching the movie. I was eating that. I was like, I can't believe I'm dieting. Like it was so good. I was like, <laughs> and then after that, about an hour later, because Endgame's three hours. So in the second hour of Endgame, I got out the halo and I ate the halo. And I was like, Oh, I love it. It was so good. So that's kind of the joy of doing like a tracking your own macro thing, like a flexible dining thing, um, is that you could pick and choose what you want to eat based on your macros. And it's just a matter of knowing how to get those macros fit and having the time to set it up and figure it out for you. And generally what I do is I just set up a day and I just repeat that day until I run out of those groceries and then I have to come up with something else, right? Um, so in the 12 week program that I'm creating, it's going to be more of the flexible dining approach where you choose what you eat, but I will give you guidelines, you know, um, so then you can just keep it to what you like to eat. Cause you know, some people can't eat nightshades or, or legumes or soybeans or whatever, you know, so it's just, um, it gives you more freedom and flexibility in that regard. But, all right. So in order to set up your macros, I'm going to teach you how to do it for fat loss. Okay. Because I assume most of you guys, um, want to lose fat, right? So the way you start is like, you need to track what you're eating without dieting, like in a normal couple of days, just eat normal and track what you're eating. Okay. And don't like be like, Oh, well, since I'm tracking, I'm not going to have this extra diet Coke, right? Like be real about it and track everything you eat just to see how many calories in general you get on your own. Okay. And track your weight those days, like do it for at least three days and see what your weight does. Okay. Because what we're trying to figure out is your maintenance calories. Okay. The only, everyone's maintenance calories is different based on the amount of muscle they have and their activity levels and all these are in their age and their hormones and all these different things. So, um, you know, if your weight is actually when you're tracking, if your weight is going up, you'll know that that's above your maintenance. And if your weight is going down, you'll know that that's below your maintenance. Okay. So, Figure out about your maintenance calorie range, okay? So then what you want to do for fat loss is we're going to make sure that you're in a calorie deficit, okay? There are two ways to get in a calorie deficit. One is to reduce your calories that you're eating. The second one is to add some exercising, okay? So be mindful of what you're doing activity-wise too on those days that you're tracking your calories. If you do not exercise at all on those days, you know that that's based on just calories, like whether you go up or down on the scale. If you always exercise at least 30 minutes a day and you did 30 minutes a day throughout that, well, then you know that's standard for you and that's fine. If you did some two hour crazy butt workout on one of those days and still ate the same, like that's gonna kind of mess it up. Do you see what I'm saying? So try to keep it, you know, consistent. So the two ways, right? Reduce your calories and increase your exercising. So in order to reduce your calories, what you would do is Find your maintenance calories like we just talked about and then take it down about maybe, you know, try 250. You know, a lot of times people say, oh, take it down 500. You want to be in a five because they do the math, right? 500 times seven days is 3,500, which equals one pound of fat or two pounds of fat or whatever, right? It's all mathematical. Well, our body isn't necessarily a math machine. So, you know, the faster you take down your carbs, the faster your body's going to adapt to it and then the lower your calories have to get. Because as you bring your calories down, and I, I think I've mentioned this to you guys, as you bring your calories down, your metabolism adapts. Sometimes I call it metabolic damage. That's not really the correct term. It's just your metabolism adapts for survival, right? You're giving your body less food. So therefore your body's trying to be more efficient and it's trying to live off of what you're giving it. It's surviving, right? That's good, right? But if you're trying to lose fat, being coming more efficient is not good. We want it to burn more, right? We want it to burn a surplus of calories. So, you know, as your calories come down, your metabolism comes down and then you're going to plateau on weight loss. So then you got to bring your calories down more to lose more weight, but then your metabolism comes down again, right? So then what? Then you get down to where you can only eat 500 calories and then zero calories, right? Like that's not 
realistic if they tell you to keep if they tell you to drop 500 calories right like so what in four cycles you're going to be eating nothing you're going to be an airtarian or whatever they are right <laughs> breathitarian um so do it by 250 right the slower you bring down your calories the longer you have to keep burning fat okay so try 250 now as far as macro, so that would give you like a target calorie range. So let's say that takes you to 1600. Okay, this is just arbitrary, but say that takes you down to 1600. Okay, so that's your target calorie range. So then the first macro that you set up is your protein. Okay, protein is the most important when you're trying to burn fat. You've got to make sure you have enough protein to maintain your lean muscle. And you can even build a little muscle if you have not been training in the gym, you know, your whole life. If you're new to training, new to resistance training, you can put on muscle during this time. Your body is actually going to be primed for it. So I would suggest doing that. But um, so protein first. Your target for protein is 0.8 to 1.2 grams of protein per pound of body weight. Okay, so I'm 130, I was 133 this morning. So for me, that would be 133 grams of protein. So you start there. Okay, so 133 grams. So then protein is four calories per gram. So you times that by four, okay, to figure out the calories. And I'm going to quick get my little trusty calculator out on my laptop here. So 133 times four, I guess I could have had this done ahead of time, but you know, I, I tend to wing things. So that's 532 calories, okay? So the next thing you're gonna do is your fat. Now, depending on the fat and the carb, you can kind of play with, okay? Some people feel better with more carb and less fat. Some people feel better with more, more fat and less carb. So that, kind of depends on you and how you feel, how your body responds. Um, I personally like about 20% fat. I would never go below 15% fat. When I went 10% fat when I was doing raw vegan, a lot of bad things happened. So I would always recommend 15% or higher, okay? I shoot for 20 to 25% generally, sometimes 30%, but you need to gauge it based on you. So pick a number, right? Pick a number not a number, pick a percentage and try it and just see how you feel. Okay. So say our target, um, our target calories is 1600. So let's say we want to try, let's try 20% fat. Okay. It's a healthy range. Um, you can easily lose weight with 20% of your calories coming from fat. So 1600 times 0.2 is that's 320 calories from fat. So Fat is nine calories per gram. So divide 320 by nine and you get 35 and a half. So you want to get about 35 and a half grams from fat. Okay. Because when, when you track these things, you really, it's easiest to track by grams, not by calories. So you, you always want to find out the grams you're supposed to be eating. Okay. So then the carbs is easy to find from there. You just add your two calories. So 532 from protein plus 320 from fat. That gives us 850. We subtract out 1600 because that's our total target. So that means we want to get 748 calories from carbs. Okay. Carbs are four calories per gram. So you divide that number by four. That gives you 187 grams, okay, of carb. So that's how you would figure out your macros for weight loss. Now, say you do that, and I mean, tracking is key, okay? So you need to be exact. You need to have a kitchen scale to measure your food. You need to use like an app like MyFitnessPal, Chronometer. There's there's many, many apps out there. I use Chronometer because it's free and I like it better than MyFitnessPal. I think MyFitness, whatever. I don't like that one. So um, you would track everything in there. You know, it's very easy to keep track of things. You can scan barcodes. It automatically inputs it. And you can sit there and adjust and play with the gram measurement. I do everything by grams and Chronometer because I have a scale that measures in grams. Well, I can measure in anything, but I choose to measure in grams. So I can be very precise. So instead of saying one scoop of protein powder, I'm like 23 grams of protein powder. Sometimes it's, you know, 58 grams of protein powder. It depends on what I need. Okay. And it changes every day. So, um, so you would plan out your meal, right? 
looking at the top where it gives you the totals, or you would plan out your day, looking at the top where it gives you the totals for grams for the macros, okay? And then you just make sure you hit those targets. And it's not about being exact. I mean, I, I'm i OCD, type A perfectionist, so I'm pretty exact, you guys. But it's more about being consistent than being exact every day, you know, like just do your best. But, um, you know, try to get within a gram or two of those targets and then bam, that's your that's your meal plan for tracking macros. But the thing is, so make sure you take your weight and your measurements, right? Then try try that plan at 1600 calories, 20% fat, you know, and see what happens. At the end of the week, you're going to weigh yourself, do measurements and take some pictures because not only does the scale or the tape measure change, but you can see changes in your physique. You can see some tightening up, some shrinkage, some like, oh my gosh, I have these, those muscles right here now. I don't know what they're called. My daughter told me. But anyway, when I do this, you guys, I've got like these three muscles that pop right here. Like, hello, that doesn't show up on the scale or in my measurements, but it shows up in pictures because I'm like, oh, where'd that come from? Right? Like it's something different. Like there might be a slight more, you know, a little more definition right here. And you're like, okay, no, it's coming in. It's cutting. It's working. You know, that's why pictures are so critical. But so you lose weight, you lose some inches. Great. Repeat it. Do it another week. Take measurements and pictures and everything again. You, you shift a little more. Great. Repeat. Right? It's a matter of tracking. So then you do it again and no shift. You stayed exactly the same or you gained or there's just such a minor shift you could hardly tell. Then you want to look at your your exer your two deficits, your calories and your exercising, right? Or you can do a refeed day, which was what I did, or you could switch your fat percentage, right? There are things you can change. You can decrease your carbs slightly and increase your fat slightly. You could um uh, you could even decrease your fat more. That's what I would do is decrease your fat a little more and increase your carbs a little more, right? You can take your calories down another hundred, take them down to 1500, you know, or do it by 50 at that point and do it, take them down to 1550 and do just minor adjustments. You know, it's just going to be a few grams difference in those macros, but those few grams cause shifts. Okay. They cause shifts in your physique. So, or if you don't want to change your calories because you're already like, no, I'm pretty hungry, then add 15 more minutes of cardio or exercise, right? By adding little bits of exercise or taking away little bits of calories, then you can continue to see changes in your physique. You'll avoid hitting a plateau. You know, there's nothing more frustrating than doing something for like a month and not seeing any change, right? It's like when you don't really track anything and... So then after a month, you're like, yeah, I've only gained like two pounds for the whole 10 months, or 10 months, <laughs> for the whole two, four weeks or whatever, right? That's so frustrating. So for me, I like to make sure I am tracking every week because I don't want to go more. I'll give it seven days. I am not going more than seven days without results. So if there's no results, I am changing it, right? Um, and you may find like at 20% fat, that maybe you don't feel as good. Maybe you want to shift your fat a little differently. Maybe you're tired. Maybe you should decrease fat, increase carbs. Maybe you're so hungry. So then you should increase your fat, decrease your carbs, you know? Um, or if you did, you know, one gram of protein per body weight, maybe you should up it to 1.2 grams of protein per body weight, per pound of body weight, right? Like there's all these little shifts that you can make to make sure you feel good, that you're seeing results, and that you continue to progress, right? But just remember, as you come down, as you bring your calories down, you will hit a point where you really can't go any lower, okay, where it's just not healthy. Um, there are people, like, when they're competing for bikini competitions and different things, where they go, like, a 1,000 calories or less and doing, like, you know, two hours of cardio. But that's for a very specific goal, and it's a very short-term thing. And they know they are doing extreme measures, and they know that they're in an unhealthy place. But it's for the stage, right? They get on the stage. After the stage, they bring it all back up, right? They decrease the cardio and bring the calories back up because you need to regain your health right? So we don't really want to do competition cutting as far as getting down that low of calories. I wouldn't go below 1200, you guys. But, um, you know, be gradual on how you would bring down your calories, 
right? As you need to shift and make changes to your meal plan and be gradual about how much cardio you add. Because if you add a ton of cardio up front, say you start a meal plan or a flexible diet or whatever, and you start at like 1,500 calories and one hour of cardio, and then after four weeks, you plateau. Well, you've only been in a fat loss stage for four weeks and already you've hit a plateau. So what are you going to do? Add two hours of cardio? Like, do you see what I'm saying? Like, that's kind of like ridiculous. So go gradual, you know, decrease calories by 50, 100, 150, 200, maybe, you know, like gradually decrease your, your calories and then gradually increase your activity so that you can keep having those little tools under your belt to to kick a plateau to the curb, okay? But then remember when you're down here, okay? Your your calories are low, your metabolism is low. So if you were to have a cheat day, okay? Or a binge day, okay? Hopefully we don't have those, but I mean, I've, I've had those days, right? I've, I've had binge eating disorder. So what happens? You eat a ton of calories and you, bam, you gain a ton of fat very, very quickly because when your metabolism is low and your calories are low, your body is primed and ready to hold on to absolutely everything and put it all on as fat, okay? So you instantly add a ton of fat. You've undone all your hard work, right? But now your metabolism is down here, so you still have to eat way down here, even lower to get any of this fat to shift now. So do you see how you just totally tip the scales and now you're just like, oh my gosh, like that's when you lose hope, right? That's when you're like, oh my goodness, I'm never going to get this weight off, okay? This is where consistency is so important, okay? You can come, you can bring everything down, bring it together, stay consistent, reach your goal, then consistently, gradually bring your calories back up reducing your cardio it brings your metabolism back up so then without gaining a ton of fat you can reverse diet get back up to a healthy level of eating right more calories maintaining the weight you lost and doing less cardio does that make sense so that's really where we want to be at the end right we want to have the physique that we want to have we want to maintain it and we want to eat and not spend our life exercising all day, right? So that's the thing, like with me, I'm doing my 12 week challenge, right? Like I'm creating a 12 week challenge, but I'm doing my own personal 12 week challenge, right? I'm four weeks in. So yeah, it's not like I'd love to eat some more food and I'm spending two hours every day exercising. That's a lot of time when you have eight kids, right? And work. So it's a sacrifice, but I know that it is a short-term sacrifice for long-term results because if I'm consistent I know it will come off right and I know that once I get it off it's easy to keep it off if you're smart about it right it's hard to take it off easy to keep it off okay but I know that once I'm down here then you know I make this sacrifice I have to eat less be a little hungry work out more and I'm gonna slowly incrementally bring my calories gradually back up and I'm gonna get back to where I can eat where I'm comfortable right? And not spend two hours in the gym and have the lean physique. So does that explain it for you guys? Do you have any questions on that? Um, I, I never know. Like, it all makes sense to me. Did I explain it well enough? I would love some feedback, actually. Does it make enough sense that you, you think you could figure it out? Or do you need more information? Um, does that stuff even interest you? I know Rebecca was interested. Um, so hopefully, Rebecca, I answered your question. Um, Yeah, so now I'm going to go live in the sisterhood and I'm going to talk about when, I think I'm going to talk about how to know when you should stop restricting your calories and when you should start reverse dieting and how to do that because I think there's some people in that group that have been restricting for a very long time and probably should start reversing for a bit. So, all right, I will talk to you ladies later. Bye.